Well, we all know how this goes, right? It's time to one-shot this late-game boss of our super-powered... He, he teleported? And again. Yeah, so maybe this doesn't work. What is the right way to kill an Archon? I'm the Engineer. let's solve a practical problem. Okay, so that bow shenanigans might be a bug and frankly should be considered one, but all the same, I wouldn't recommend using a bow for this anyway. Something you could consider using would be Grendel Prime, which, conveniently enough, I'll be giving away a Grendel Prime access pack courtesy of DE. Full details at the end of the video. Previously, when it came to killing Archons, it turned out that crits, multi-shot, and funky incarnate bonuses would bypass their defenses and allow a one-shot. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, that is no longer possible. Instead, the damage attenuation formulae have been updated to consider all incoming damage properly. On the plus side, the attenuation is now much gentler, allowing for non-meta setups to actually achieve something. Archon attenuation is done through what D referred to as damage pillows. In essence, the more damage you do with a single shot, and the more damage you do per second, the more damage resistance the Archon has. It's like putting down pillows to protect against higher and heavier falls. A bigger drop is still a bigger landing, but not as much bigger as it would have been without the pillows. Even attacks with the same weapon show this in effect. Testing with the Kuva Heck, I landed an array of body shots which dealt 9,499 yellow critical damage and 13,068 orange critical damage. According to the build, going from yellow to orange crits should have been 82.1% more damage, but in actuality, it was only 37.6%. On adding Eclipse into the mix, with an unknown but maximum bonus of 414%, I landed hits of 15,912 yellow crit and 18,785 orange crit. The higher tier critical should still have been 82.1% more damage, but now had fallen to only 18.1%, due to the buff from Eclipse ramping up the damage attenuation. Eclipse itself provided a final bonus of 67.5% to the yellow critical damage. In truth, the actual critical bonus on the orange crit was likely higher than I'm saying here, and the Eclipse bonus on the orange crit lower than on the yellow. This is because all bonuses from all sources get reduced the more bonuses you stack. What we can't easily see is which one is reduced by how much. Regardless, you still end up dealing higher damage with the bonuses than without the bonuses. They're just weaker. Despite dampening a lot of the effect of your damage bonuses, the Archons have also been made significantly less adaptive to damage. Previously, if you were not using a high meta setup, you were probably in for a bad time. Since the patch, well, look at how effective the Form and Prime is on automatic mode in killing this Archon. This might not look impressive to some of you, but consider this is being done with an entirely non-galvanized build. Normal Argon Scope, normal serration, normal split chamber, but the only later game power up being primary deadhead. If you don't even equip something like that, quite frankly, you deserve the difficulty you get in the Archon Hunt. With a much more powerful weapon like the Dual Toxicist Incarnate, scaled up using a proper galvanized setup, the Archon falls over with very little effort on our part. For your main weapon choice then, I recommend an automatic, high damage radiation weapon that's easy to score headshots with. Headshots mean you can stack up the Deadhead Arcane for a strong damage boost that'll last long enough to be of use in the Archon Showdown. Headshots also give a huge boost to non-AoE damage, 3.9 times when using Deadhead, while doubling your critical damage multiplier. The automatic portion of this suggestion is because this seems to handle most effectively against the damage attenuation Archons have versus individual shots. While fire rate doesn't directly translate to an easier time, a low fire rate does seem to match with weapons that have a less impressive effect now. If you've got the space for a primer, consider adding cold rather than viral. Cold procs will slow the Archon down, making it easier to land crucial headshots and slow down their transition to different attack phases. These same tactics can be used against all the other enemies that spawn throughout the mission too. Once you have your pick of an automatic, crit-built radiation weapon, whether it's as basic as the Foreman Prime or Gopher Prime, or as stellar as the Burst or Dual Toxist Incarnans, you should stock up on defense. You can't crowd control Archons after all, and invisibility can be a liability when using radiation builds, facing Archon abilities, or just having allies in the squad. Give yourself plenty of means to hold out against the Archons, at least long enough to deal with the various stages of invulnerability. A good tank gives you the freedom to aim properly for the head. Tank focus frames such as Revenant and Rhino, or simple health tanks like Lavos and Grendel, will do plenty fine. 
take what you're comfortable with and make sure not to face tank the charge beam attacks some Nama enemies have if your shields are down. Lastly, make sure you're equipped with a suitable arsenal to handle the other enemies you'll need to kill. Basic enemies are only really there to be a nuisance and to grant stacks to your Archon killer, however you still have to deal with Xmas units and Archon specific threats. For Boreal, bring a wide body projectile weapon as your backup weapon to support dealing with the Aerialist. A corrosive modded Strofa or Catch Moon should do the trick, shattering the canisters quickly. You can also use Midori's Void Strike with a 777 amp, though I prefer to keep a Nairu as a backup plan for easy self revives and for defense stripping. For Amar, bring a weapon simply suitable for dealing with normal sentient units. A high slash melee like Glade Prime, or even simply switching the form into shotgun mode can work well enough. Sentience can be rather tricky to headshot in my experience, but it's not impossible, and again, that is where Cold Prox can help you out. For Naira, generally equipping yourself in the Nama Corpus and surviving her toxin should be sufficient. The main threat that has tripped up many players is not putting a high enough priority on the Amalgam Mowers that spawn and heal Naira. Kill them quickly, or she can prolong the fight much more. So let's go over some builds that are tried and tested in the new Archon Hunts. You can give these specific ones a try, or adapt the builds to your preferred weapons of a similar nature. For the Burston and Karnan, I found Corrosive Heat to be sufficiently strong that a radiation approach was unnecessary. As a bonus, this weapon is very effective at destroying the airless canisters, making it a viable all-in-one weapon against Boreal specifically. For the Dual Toxicist in Karnan, using this setup with radiation not only means an incredible outpouring of damage against the Archons, but also its Frenzy Perk adds Toxin, which is especially effective against the Nama Corpus. For the Forming Prime, focusing on the Rifle Mode is the main objective here, using Shotgun Mode only when it's hard to land headshots on any given enemy. This isn't the strongest weapon, but is sufficiently effective as an Arkham Killer if you've yet to acquire Incarnum Weaponry. It also has no ammo issues, another bonus for those on lower tiers. For the Strofer, the entire goal is having a corrosive heavy attack for Boreal's Aerialist specifically. I broadly would not recommend melee against the Archons otherwise, as they're very mobile and can make getting hits in a pain overall. For Glaive Prime, it's a slash monster. It's expensive to buy due to being vaulted for what feels like millennia at this point, but if you have one, it'll make short work out of most non-Archon units. If you have Viral Prox from another source, swap into Corrosive or even go for Toxin and Life Strike for a healing combo. With the Companions, there are a lot of options to pick from with the rework, so I'm just going to focus on one which is pure support, Worm Prime. Set up like this, we've got Shield and Health Restoration, Status Resistance, and two very valuable Bond mods. Reinforced Bond is always active while Worm Prime is alive thanks to its extremely high shields, giving a near permanent 60% fire rate boost. Tenacious Bond, on the other hand, grants a plus 1.2 times critical multiplier after all modding, so long as the companion has a suitably high critical weapon. Worm Prime doesn't need to attack to trigger the Bond mod, just have the weapon equipped, so we can skip Assault mode in this build. The ideal weapon for Worm Prime then would be Volklock, moddable with no potato needed. First, add Point Strike to give us the critical chance needed for Tenacious Bond. Alongside that, we can use four Vigilante mods which will buff 20% of your primary weapon critical hits up a tier. As it only boosts critical hits, you can safely use this with the Felarchs and Fenmore without interfering with their 2000% damage perk. Speaking of which, all the Incarnate Weapon builds my original Archon Guide work still today, just without the one-shot potential. Again, you can have your pick of weapons and companions to suit your preference. I'm only putting these here as a reference for anyone who just wants builds they know will work. So overall, Archons are no longer a one-shot boss, but they are also no longer quite such a slog to kill by any other means. More boosts will mean more damage, especially against everything except the Archon itself, which is arguably just as important in the mission. Now, I promised you a Grendel Prime Axis giveaway, and that's exactly what I have for you here. DE, that's Digital Extremes, the people who make Warframe, just in case you're unfamiliar with those initials, they have provided me with a top tier pulverized Grendel Prime Access Pack to give away to one of you. Normally, I do these kinds of giveaways through my live streams, but why not mix it up this time? As part of this then, I ask only three things of you. One, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below this video. It's free and you're looking to join a giveaway on this channel, so you might as well. Two, fill out the entry form linked at the top of the video description. It shouldn't even take you two minutes to do. 3. Watch out for the winner to be announced in both a YouTube community post on this channel, 
and over on my Discord, where you can catch the latest details from across all my channels. The deadline to enter is the 7th of November this year, so I highly recommend you don't delay on entering, just in case you forget and miss out. The full terms will be on my website link below, mostly with details like it's free to enter, multiple entries aren't allowed, and people who are related to me can't enter. Typical legal jargon. Anyway, I've talked long enough on this topic now, you should be well equipped to deal with Archons, so as always, go subscribe, hope for Grendel, and fight well Tenno.